Today on the podcast, I'm joined by an actress who we've watched grow up on the cobbles for the past 12 years. In the role of Amy Barlow, we've seen her experience teenage pregnancy, claim to commune with the spirit of Grandpa Blanche, and most recently, get involved with the local drug dealer turned Robo Romeo Jacob. It's Ellie Mulvaney. Ellie, great to have you here on the podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. No worries, it's lovely to speak to you. So, yes, this is all very exciting. I'm glad you're excited. I'm excited about this too. Yeah, this will be fun. Your first podcast. Yes. (laughs) So I have been really interested seeing which direction Corrie's been taking Amy on the show recently. What did you think when you heard that she was going to be shacking up with Jacob? Well, I mean, my initial reaction was definitely shock. It was, it came out of nowhere and I just thought, wow, I wonder how this is going to work. Because obviously, when you first get an on-screen relationship, you wonder what the chemistry is going to be like. And also, you kind of wonder about the compatibility of the characters, because obviously, Amy's very headstrong. She's fierce. She's very independent. So, to put her with somebody, it's like, oh, I wonder what that dynamic will be. Because Mm. obviously, you don't want to dilute her independence by putting her with somebody. But... Honestly, the chemistry's really worked. I think I think it's massively helped by the fact that me and Jack obviously really get on and all the viewers have seemed to have loved it because I quite like to keep up, you know, with the reaction and stuff like on Twitter and yeah. Instagram. We've had really good feedback. So, you know, I think it's been a pleasant surprise. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I've been really enjoying it. We've not seen very much so far. They're in their early stages, aren't they? But that, um, that stuff on the boat yeah. last week was lovely. Yeah, and we really, really loved filming that. Like, I remember when I first got the scripts for that, and it was just like, we both read it, and we were both like, oh, these are so well written. And they're just lovely scenes about young love, because, you know, it isn't always breakups and cheating and whatever, you know. There is really happy relationships with with two characters who genuinely love each other. Mm Mm-hmm. So after her relationship with Tyler a couple of years ago, do you think it's fair to say that Amy has a bit of a thing for the bad boys? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I I think Amy definitely likes a bad boy. I think she likes somebody who's got a bit of something about them. Yeah. And I think, to be honest, she needs that. Like, she is independent. She's feisty. So she needs somebody who can hold their own. Yeah. I don't think that she would match well with somebody who's shy or you know, who's a bit on the quiet side. I think Mm. she does need somebody who's got that personality about them, which Tyler and Jacob both have. Yeah. But do you think that Jacob's changed for the better since we saw him last year? Yes, I do. I think, you know, he was a victim as well in the whole drug gang thing, you know, just like Simon was. And I think he is a redeemable character because Mm. even when he was in a year ago, he still had that cheeky side to him. Like, he, you know, he wasn't just a full-on baddie. Like, yes, he did do wrong things, obviously, but he had that cheekiness to him, and I think that's what people loved. It just made him so likeable, even though what he was doing was obviously awful. So Mm. I think he's changed. Yeah. It's interesting you said that he was a victim as well, because um, I suppose you could say that he was just a couple of steps ahead of Simon, in a way, in Harvey's gang, wasn't he? And and if Simon had, you know, carried on for longer, he could have been just as bad as Jacob was. Well, yeah, exactly. Because I think in in gangs, there's always somebody above you, you know. It was clearly a big gang, you know, with a chain of command. So obviously above Jacob was Harvey. Mm. So I think... They were both victims in that scenario. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he we saw him getting um, Asher and Adi fake IDs the other week, which proves he hasn't mm-hmm. left all of his criminal contacts behind. So do you think there's a chance he might drift back into the life of crime and take Amy with him? Oh, I hope not. I hope <laughs> not. I think, I think it would just be lovely to just see him redeemed. And I think viewers really like, you know, the bad boy turned good. I think they like seeing, a, a, like, a bad character change because I think that they can I think people are redeemable Mm. and I think I really hope he has turned his life around and changed for the better but who knows yeah yeah do you you think that Amy would be smart enough to recognize any signs and get out while she could if he was going to go down that route I think she would I think Amy's Amy is very smart she's very much on it and like I said earlier she's it she is independent yeah so even though she does love him it doesn't mean that she would then follow him down that same path if no. he went down. No. Well, speaking of dubious activities, we've also seen Amy getting involved in the upskirting and spiking stories in the past month or so. So are you are you happy to be involved in these issues-based stories as well as, you know, the full-on soap, soapy drama ones? 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the things that Corrie does really, really well. And everybody always praises Corrie for doing that, you know, bringing up these issues. Because I think it also just sparks that conversation, like, about... I remember people messaging me and saying, like, does this even happen, upskirting and stuff? But then Mm. on the flip side of that, you'd also get people messaging you saying, thank you for sharing this this topic because I, I too, have dealt with this. So, you know, you see people realise that these things actually do happen. And I think spiking was more in the media than upskirting. Mm. But spiking and upskirting are both really important stories to do because you've got to raise awareness about these things and get people talking about them. And I think it gives you a sense of, like, importance to know that your character was involved in that and that you can then tell them stories. Because obviously it's great playing the romance side of things and the funny side of things, but then... Obviously, it's also great to get your teeth into other stuff like issue-based things. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, you said earlier that maybe Amy's not going to be following mum and dad's uh, footsteps and going into prison. But um, in your early days in the show, there's a bit of a running joke that you were channeling the spirit of Blanche in your mannerisms as well. (laughs) So do you think that she's still got that edge to her? Oh, yes. I think, I really think Amy gets her funniness from Blanche. Mm. And I think... I'm hoping that they'll bring that through more because obviously she does have funny parents like Steve and Tracy are funny so I'm hoping yeah. that they maybe bring out the humour more rather than perhaps going to jail. <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't get a chance to work alongside Maggie Jones did you? No unfortunately not because when I joined she had just passed away so we mm. never really crossed paths. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. So you got the role of Amy that was when you were, was it when you were seven then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was acting something you'd wanted to do as long as you could remember? Oh yeah, yeah. I've always, lo- I've always loved it. I used to go to like an acting club when I was younger. Oh yeah. Because my sister was in this acting club as well, so we both really enjoyed it, just as a hobby, mm. really. And obviously, bits in primary school and whatever. Yeah. But no, it's always been a passion. And then, as I got the role in Corrie, it kind of just grew and grew and grew. Yeah. How much do you remember about getting the role? I remember. Um, so I remember the audition and I remember when I found out that I got the role, yeah. which was all very exciting because they came to my school, they brought a big teddy bear. Oh, um, cool. It was all very exciting and I've still, I've still got the bear from it. Yeah. Because, yeah. Well, just, what was the audition like? What did you have to do? Uh, I had to read out this quote, which basically said, whales are mammals, not fish. <laughs> and I remember going in, I was proper messy kid so I had like beans down my top which just just looked like a proper scruff to be honest but um <laughs> I remember going in and I messed up the line yeah. and I was like oh I was like, sorry can I do it again <laughs> and then they were laughing and stuff and I think that they must have liked that side of things you know the fact that I was quite I was quite a bubbly kid I was chatty yeah. so yeah I think that's the only reason they must have picked me, <laughs> because I didn't get the lines right. Yeah. Was that a line that you then had to do in the programme? No. <laughs> I know. That's a bit random. It was just really random, and that's why I remember it, because I remember getting it wrong, and then thinking, this is the most random thing ever, because mm. when I came out, my mum was like, so how did it go? Like, what, what did you have to do? I said to her, so they had to say whales are mammals, not fish. That's so funny. That's so funny. So were your family Coronation Street watchers before you got the part? Yeah, yeah. My mum and dad have always loved it. Oh, my so how did they? Re- love it. How did they react then? Oh, they were just buzzing. They were they were over the moon for me. They've always been like really good supporters of me and everything I do. But then also the fact that they loved the show anyway. It's just like really exciting. Mm. Were you able to comprehend at such a young age just how big a deal it was that you got this part? Oh, definitely not. I mean, I knew it was big, but didn't realise how big. Like, when you go for something like that when you're so young, you, you just think it's exciting, which obviously it was, but you don't actually comprehend, like, the magnitude of how big the show is. Because <laughs> obviously there's millions of viewers, millions of fans, it's just... A completely different world. Yeah. So when do you think it kind of dawned on you that this was something huge? That was only as I kind of started to grow up and stuff. So as you get into high school and then I think more 
when people are recognizing you all the time and stuff you then realize oh this is quite big <laughs> <laughs> what what did it mean like for your education during your teenage years were you were you tutored on the set and things yes yeah, so you have a tutor at the set but i i've always been a bit of a geek so <laughs> it was all right for me to be honest um you just you just catch up on things like the teachers will send you work when you're off and you'll just do it in the tutor room or yeah. you know you catch up on things but it's, it really is one of them things you just juggle it like people always say to me like oh I would never be able to manage that and it's like but you would if you'd done it from such a young age if you'd always yeah. had to juggle things and you'd always manage things in a certain way mm. you would mm. yeah and did you still manage to keep in touch with your friends at school and things yeah 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 we're all really close yeah yeah so I mean often you'll get cast members wanting to move on or focus more on their studies as they go through their teenage years like over the last mm-hmm. few years we've we've lost Matilda Freeman, Zen and Ditcher, Harry McDermott so was that ever something yeah. that you just you considered? No I mean for me I've I've always been able to have quite a good balance of them both whereas yeah. other people might want to focus more on their studies which is obviously understandable but for me I just made it work so mm. It, it was never really a thing for me. Yeah, yeah. So last year we, we saw a massive increase in the number of episodes that Asha was in now that Tanisha's old enough to take more on. Yes. And is, is that something we can expect to see for Amy this year, do you think? I mean, I hope so. I think it would be lovely if, you know, we had more teen storylines and stuff because I think we all work really well together. You know, our yeah. little, like, our, our girl gang with me, Asha and and Summer, I think that's always a cute little trio. And then also, you know, in in the bigger group of, like, Addy, Asha, you know, Summer, that whole that whole group, obviously I'm missing people out, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, yeah, and then hopefully more things to come with Amy and Jacob. Yeah, yeah. Well, last year Ian McLeod made no secret of the fact that he wanted to push the younger characters to the cast, of the cast of the forefront, did he? Yeah. Um, and and I, I think that Corrie has got an especially strong cast of late teens, early 20s actors at the moment. So do you feel mm-hmm. that in a way it's kind of your responsibility to keep the show going and appealing to a new generation of viewers? Absolutely. And I think it's also appealing to different age groups because I think when you're getting viewers who are my age, probably quite like to see, you know, characters that they can relate to who are similar ages, going through similar things or people who are just leaving school, you know, because it's almost like a point of reference Mm. for advice, Mm. like, specifically, like, we're talking about Tanisha, like, her storylines with the skin lighting in and and then the photos being sent around. Mm. They're stories that a lot of people will also be able to relate to, so being able to show them stories as the younger cats is also really, really important. And Mm. I think Tanisha's just absolutely shone these past years. Oh, she's been amazing. She's been fantastic, hasn't she? She is so, so good. And then, again, you know, allowing the younger cats to take on more of these stories, I just think... I think will be really, really good for the show. And it's also allowing us to show what we can do. Yeah, yeah, totally. Tanisha, um, she got the part of Asha just a couple of months before you started playing Amy, didn't she? Yes, she did. Yeah, so did you two get to know each other much in those early years? Or did your paths not cross much because of being in different stories? Yeah, I mean, they didn't pa- they didn't cross as much when we were younger. So it was only really as we got into, like, the high school years that we became close. But obviously, we did meet when we were younger, but we just weren't that close because obviously you do different things. Or, like, she'll be in on one day and I might be in mm. the other. So, it, like I said, it was only as we kind of started getting put together as we were teenagers that we really got on. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, we have always been friends. Yeah, because I guess in those early years for both of you, you only had a, a small number of episodes you were allowed to appear in during the year, weren't you? And maybe they just didn't cross. <laughs> well, I suppose it's also because when you're younger, they try and let you have more time in school because obviously education is yeah, really yeah. important. So there's that. And then also, you don't really see many of the younger kids mixing. Like, you wouldn't really see, I don't know, the joseph having a scene with jack Mm. for example so even though they're both younger cast members they probably very rarely speak yeah yeah so who who on the cast would you say that you did form quite close bonds with during your early years um probably i don't know me and me and tanisha have always been close but just um did any of the adult um, cast take, take you under their wing, like Simon or, or Kate or anyone? Oh, Simon and Kate have always been close to, yeah. Yeah. 
just we just really got on i've said this in my interviews and stuff before but they do act like your real parents you know yeah. like they properly look out for me and stuff so they have always been great yeah and yeah just good to have a laugh with but also yeah other people my age ellie leach and colson yeah yeah of course always yeah. got on because they were obviously in when i was younger as well but yeah, there's been quite a lot of us who've grown up together and just all stayed close. Mm-hmm. Which of which of uh, Amy's two parents would you say that she takes after the most? Oh, out of Tracy and Steve. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a tough one. I, I'd probably say Tracy because I think she is a proper mini Tracy. She's a mini me, and I think she has. She's, she's fiery. She's feisty. She stands up for what she wants, but then I think the humour definitely comes from Steve. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, well, ho- hopefully we're not going to see Amy banged up for uh, bashing Jacob over the head with a statue any time soon, are we? I think I'd agree with you that she takes after uh, after Tracy more. So, yeah. over the years, you've you've played a part in quite a few stories, but before this one that's going on at the moment, the most memorable was Amy's pregnancy three years ago. So did that feel yeah. like quite a big step up for you as an actress? Yes, it did, because that was kind of my first big storyline. Yeah. Like, yes, it. So, yeah, I felt like that was kind of... It was it was Corey basically saying, here's a big storyline, you know, we're happy with what you're doing. So that was quite big for me. Mm. But, yeah, just good to get your teeth into something for the first time, definitely. Yeah. Was there ever a possibility that Amy was going to keep the baby or was it always a case that, no, she was going to have the termination? I think there definitely was a possibility that she was going to keep the baby. Mm. I think it was when she saw how much Steve and Tracy were arguing and the situation that she was put in that ended up with the termination of the baby. Mm. Are you are you glad that Amy has didn't decide to keep it in the end? I am. I am personally quite glad that she didn't because mm. I just think I don't know. I think. <laughs> I suppose if you... the Amy and Jacob story have happened. Yeah, there, there's quite a lot. I mean, once once a character has has got a kid, then yeah, then there, there's only certain number of roads that they can easily take them down, isn't there? Exactly. Unless they have it like Faye and they just give the baby away to or let, yeah. the, let the father look after it. <laughs> yeah. So I think that Amy definitely seems to have her head screwed on in terms of academics. And we've recently heard her talking about going to university. So with so few Corrie characters over the years ever actually going into further education, do you think that Amy's going to buck the trend and actually get that degree? Well, I hope so. I think it would be cool because obviously... None of the McDonald's or Barlow's have been to university. No. I might be wrong about Barlow's. I think none of the McDonald's. Well, you've got Steve's I... brother, Andy. He's uh, He's got his degree, I think. Yeah, he must have. But he's got. He's in Spain now, so we didn't count. <laughs> yeah. He just, he's in Spain. He's in Spain. <laughs> Off the McDonald's on the street. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be quite a quite nice change to see an academic in the family. Yeah. Because... Obviously, I don't think Steve is um, very smart. I think it would be quite nice to have somebody who is. Mm, mm. I think he'd be quite proud of her. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, even though they do joke around with Amy, I think Steve and Tracy are really proud of her. Yeah. Are you, are you worried at all that if Amy does go off to university, it might see her screen time reduced? Not particularly. I think it would all be fine. Mm-hmm. So do, do you have any ideas of which kind of route you'd like to see her go down, like career-wise or, or family-wise or anything in the future? Have you got like anything mapped out where you'd like it to go? Not particularly. I quite like to just see where things go. And I think, I think that's probably the best way to be because then it's always... It, it makes it more exciting because when you get given new storylines, it's then exciting to wonder what the character will then do with that you know what I mean like when mm. I got the Amy Jacobs storyline it was then very exciting thinking oh god I wonder where this will go mm. yeah yeah of course do, would you rather she had more kind of comedic storylines or dramatic ones or a mixture of both I would love more comedic storylines I think I love the humour I think that's what Corey's best known for you know yeah. all the funny side of things and just having a laugh and I think I think Amy and Jacob can be really funny so I think mm. 
they're probably the ones I'd prefer to most. But obviously, always happy to do an issue-based storyline or anything dramatic. Just, yeah, anything to keep me on my toes. <laughs> yeah. Would you say that you're much like Amy in real life? A little bit. I think I'm very academic like Amy. Mm-hmm. And also, I am quite headstrong. But I think Amy is definitely a lot more feisty than me. <laughs> um <laughs> Because she definitely always stands her ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, as, as a Barlow, I think you're quite lucky in that you've got a job at Corrie for Life if you want it. So do you think you'd like Amy to become a long-term character like her parents and grandparents before her? Oh, yeah, I think I'll stay as long as they'll ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope so, because um, I've, I've really enjoyed seeing the, the, the character of Amy grow up and I'm glad that they are giving you the, the oh, more of the big yeah. stories now. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's been absolutely lovely speaking to you today, Lee. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed it. That's good. It's been lovely speaking to you. Well, best of luck for the future, and I hope that we are going to see Amy um, gracing the combos for many years to come. Oh, lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, bye-bye then. Bye-bye.